I think, as I said in the speech, uh, national insurance scheme is not new and by itself is not wrong because our medical is a national insurance scheme. But I think when we designed MediShield, we were extremely, extremely careful to avoid what economists call moral hazards, which are really in layman terms, abuses, over-consumption, over-servicing. So, but many countries, unfortunately, did not design their schemes that way. And once uh, it has been implemented, it's very hard to change. So that's why you, you, you have all the problems, whether it's US, you, Germany or Japan. It's the same old problem. And uh, looking at some of their ideas, they resemble so much of what is happening in, the, in, the, in Europe and US. And I thought I need to point it out. So I'm, we are not against insurance. In fact, insurance is a significant part of our 3M system but we have carefully uh, modified it to suit our purpose. So ours is not a pure insurance scheme. Ours has incorporated insurance into our overall scheme. So it's an insurance plus plus. Insurance plus taxation-based system, which is subsidy, and then plus savings, which is medicine, which is unique in the world. Yeah. I think that is what makes our system unique and we strongly believe that is what makes our system uh, so much more uh, uh, functional than other systems. So therefore, I, I must say I was uh, very worried about some of those ideas being uh, uh, put forward to Singaporeans to consider. Yep. Hey. Hmm.保险医药保险的制度不是一个新的意见很多国家都有其实我们的健保双权就是一个全国性的保险制度不过很重要的就是我们不单单是一个纯粹的保险制度我们也不是一个好像英国纯粹的这个用税收来维持的一个卫生系统我们是看怎样利用这两个不同的计划其他好处然后制造成一个我们自己非常特殊的一个保健计划所以很多我们已经做了二十多年了所以成绩是可以大家看得出的这边的卫生的水准可以跟任何一个国家比美的但是如果你仔细的看我们只花了四八千的 GDP 同样的方法但是他们做不来因为一旦你已经设施了你全国性的一种计划要改变很难的这就是为什么医药这一方面的东西一定要非常仔细的考虑因为一旦你落实了要把它改变过来很难的所以英国英国的NHS60多年了 已经达到了我们自己一个我觉得相当不错的一个方法希望国民能够了解这个系统我们不敢说是十全十美不过比起好多国家 
，其实是很不错的。当然，能不能够改进，当然有，有改进的的空间。所以我们就一直逐步的改进，尤其在最近五年，我在这方面下了很多功夫，你们也知道的。呀，所以现在的系统跟五年前，我觉得进步了很多。但是还是当然还有空间能够改进的。Sorry， yeah。Less than ten percent， yeah。嗯。Which is the case？、Uh? Which is, which is？ No, of course, of course, you have to buy. Ah, what you mean? What you mean? Provide for free. No, I mean you are talking about national entrance scheme. Yes. I really don't see anything wrong if the government provides the basic national entrance scheme. Yeah, which we are doing through CPF. Ah, what what do you mean? What do you mean? We are not providing. Medishield covers ninety over percent of our Singapore. Yeah, Medishield is something you have to buy on your own with your Medishield CPF money, Medishield money. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? Yeah, that's that's what I meant. You you are suggesting that we make we provide for free, ah? That's what you're saying. <laughs> then that's a very different system. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. It's basic in the sense that you have to buy your frills, but the basic is the bulk of the expenditure. Uh, most patients, you know, this is this is in fact what is needed. They go in to class C, class B two. They get a full range of、uh, treatment as necessary.、Uh, we don't abuse it because it's a public sector,、uh, so our doctors are ethical. We don't over provide, and that's enough for their care. Whether it's for cataracts, for even open heart surgery. But is that base so basic that you know it is that you need to top up with a lot more? You don't. In fact, for the bulk of the population. Who、uh, typically、uh, are happy with class C, class B two, and we are proud of our class C, class B two. Medishield is good enough, and Medishield is the scheme; it's a national scheme. So you are saying that let's provide this for free. Now you are going back to even earlier steps of should healthcare be free? I don't think anybody, you know, in their right mind is proposing that.、Uh, even in all the manifesto I've read. Nobody is suggesting. I think everybody know that free healthcare is wrong. So I don't think anybody is proposing a free healthcare, lah, because they know free healthcare there are problems. There are huge problems. So, so I, I, I no, I disagree that you you said our medical is the same as what they are proposing. It's not <laughs> far from it, <laughs> and that's why I need to point it out why we are different and why it is important that we are different. Yeah. No, I'm I, I'm not concerned. You know that Singaporeans will be swung by this. But I thought it's my duty, uh, and uh, my campaign approach. And it's not just a campaign during campaign, uh, even uh, during the five-year period,、uh, without outside of campaign period. My approach has always been: I will explain what we are doing, why we are doing, and Singaporeans are, are mature and rational, and I think majority understood why it is needed. But campaign period, because strange ideas will crop up. I think it's my duty to point out some of the pitfalls. Yeah.、Uh, Mister,、hmm. elaborate a little bit and clarify、uh, yes. your concerns and your worry about this national interest. I thought I've just done. Oh, could you elaborate? The ministry actually considered that they are actually providing basic medical, and they are paying for the basic medical for Singaporeans, and if not, then. Strange, you know. I I I don't I don't understand why you are straying so far away off tangent. You mean you are reading the whole idea as as you want medical to be free? I I don't follow at all. Medical is the main tier, you know. You are suggesting as if medical is such a small little thing that only provide cough and cold, and then you know the rest is、uh, therefore you buy in. Medical is the scheme for healthcare financing. 
Whether you go for heart bypass, B2C, who pays the bill? The bulk of the bill is paid by MediShield. So MediShield is not basic at all. Why do you get the impression that MediShield is so basic? What is between basic and, and your so-called basic and, and frail is, do you go class A or do you go class B2? Can you choose a particular doctor? I want Dr. ABC to do the heart surgery for me. Or, no, I think the department will look after you. And if it's complicated, the senior consultant will do so. And then do you choose class A or do you choose class C? So that's the difference between this so-called basic and non-basic. As far as treatment is concerned, there's no difference. Medicine is the same. The medicine I take when I was a hospital patient in uh, SGH for my heart bypass is exactly the same medicine as uh, the patient, the fellow patient that I met in class C. Yeah. So clinically, you know, it is the same. There's no difference. But physical conditions are different. Some is icon, uh, and maybe the diet and the food provided. You have choices of uh, more choices, maybe. So, so as far as from a clinical point of view, it's not, it's not basic at all. As a result, the health outcome is something that we can be very proud of. And, that, and, and what is the final test? Is look at all the health data, life expectancy, infant mortality rate, uh, cancer survival rate. And bearing in mind, the bulk of our patients are subsidized patients. If, as you described, our basic, basic is so basic, then I think our health outcome will not be as first world as it is. I'm, 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 I'm baffled because you are supposed to be in charge of, of health, you know, in reporting, and your understanding of medical is so basic. No, I think you misunderstand uh, the question because yeah. you were talking about abuse. There was a national insurance scheme that is paid for by the government. So our understanding of uh, medical basic is that there are quite a lot of caps. Uh, it's suitable if you go to a subsidized class. Mm -hmm. And as you say, these are public hospitals, so there would be abuse. So if we are talking about uh, what they are suggesting, First, uh, this is not my reading of their proposal. If you are, they themselves have better sense than that, they are not proposing that. It is you who are proposing that, you are interpreting that, because they are, not, they are talking about co-payment, they are saying that uh, premiums can be you know, assisted you know, by, by for the poor. So they, they themselves recognize that, that uh, premiums have to be paid for by the, by the policy holders, but for the very poor, government need to come in to subsidize. They are, none of them is proposing that subsid the premium should be free. Because when premium is free, what does it mean? That means you go back to everything is free then. Because having paid the premium, you will receive B2C services for free, right? Then you get back to, are you saying healthcare should be free? Then I think we have to go back 30 years uh, when this debate was there. Should we have free healthcare in Singapore? I thought we have long past that stage. <laughs> so I'm a bit baffled and worried <laughs> that if our reporters are thinking that we should be providing free health care, then I'll be extremely worried. So I wasn't worried before I start. Now I'm very worried. <laughs> I, I suspect you are minority. I think you are, you know, because even the, all the opposition parties uh, manifesto, nobody is promoting uh, free health care. Yeah. Nobody's promoting that. Hmm? Um, SDP's uh, yeah. health proposals include things like having more hospital beds, yes. um, as well as you know, converting board debts into clinics. Yes. Um, you address, I mean, you, you plan to address this in yes. your speech, but perhaps you could explain why you think you know, could assess whether mm. these are viable. Mm. Sure. I think when we compare countries, uh, you need to understand why we spend 4%, others spend two or three times that. Because why do they spend two or three times that? Because they have many more hospital beds, many more this and many more that. Because it's not just throwing money, you know, which disappear. The money go into building hospitals and, more importantly, running the hospitals. So then you have to look at outcome. Why do we create hospitals? 
is to treat patients so that they get well. Therefore, when you compare two systems, uh, which systems uh, you know, does better, you look at outcomes, because you should not be just looking at beds, because beds is just a means to an end. And the end is hopefully better health outcome. Either patients live longer and population life expectancy is longer, cancer rates, mortality rate is better, etc., etc. So when you look at outcome, so what you will observe very conclude very quickly is our outcome is as good as any. In fact, it's for certain outcomes, we are better off than even U.S., who spend two or three times our rate. Therefore, then you ask the question, why must we ape the U.S. in terms of number of hospital, number of beds, for the fun of doing so? If the outcome is the same, already with less resources. That, that is my question. So I think we should be proud that we are achieving the same outcome with less resources than others. I mean, if our outcomes are inferior, grossly inferior compared to U.S., then yes, maybe it is because we are under-investing and therefore we should quickly go and catch up. But we are not. So why should we just throw more bits and throw more you know, resources to achieve the same outcome? That, that is my question. But it is not as if we are frozen at today's uh, capacity. I mean, you know my views, I've discussed that many times. We have so many different plans to expand the capacity. So expansion there will be, new hospitals coming out, new community hospitals, etc., etc. But there is also such a thing as over-expanding. Because their starting point is, we are below U.S. norms or European norms. We should catch up with them. And that I disagree. What about the idea about polyclinics and polytests? The, the same? Yes, uh, yes. yes. So I, I, I share the objective. We should bring convenience yeah, to the patients, which is what we have been trying to do all this while. And I believe our, our solution, which is PCPS, making use of GPs who are already out there. And there are 700 GPs were our partners, so patients can go there with means testing, of course. And so long as you are, you are means tested, you can go there. They will charge you similar to polyclinic rates. And I think that's much more convenient. And the doctors are already there, and they have enough capacity to do more. So, so that is where, where uh, we think our idea is more superior than taking over more void decks and creating mini polyclinics. Because then the next question is, who man those mini polyclinics? Is that definite that you will be expanding the PCPS to include four as means tested people of other ages than those 65 and older? Yes, we have been progressively uh, ex uh, expanding, extending PCPS. We have uh, done it for several years now. The, the big move recently I did was to expand from acute care, that means cough and, care, cough and cold, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, from, yeah, to, to chronic care, so the major chronic diseases. And uh, I've read an article in ST proposing that the, uh, perhaps you can further extend it to also include uh, younger but poorer patients, I think that's a worthy idea, worthy of, uh, of study. And uh, if it is practical, uh, I intend to do so.